I ran around my room, jumped on my bed. I jumped up and down and just kept screaming, Stevie Wonder's going to be on my album. <laughs> Cher, the iconic singer and Oscar-winning actress, has captivated audiences for decades with her dazzling talent and unstoppable spirit. Now approaching 80, she continues to enchant the world with her timeless charisma and unyielding energy. Recently, her son has dropped a bombshell revelation that peels back layers of speculation, confirming suspicions that have buzzed around her legendary persona for years. As we peel back the curtain on this latest chapter in her storied life, join us as we uncover the truths behind the diva who has captivated millions. Her difficult childhood. Sherilyn Sarkeesian, better known simply as Cher, was born on May 20, 1946, in California. Her early life was marked by instability and challenges. Her father, John Sarkeesian, was of Armenian descent and struggled with drug and gambling issues. He wasn't around much, and Cher's parents ended their marriage when she was still a baby. Cher's mother, Georgia Holt, originally named Jackie Jean Crouch, had multiple ancestries, including Irish, English, German, and Cherokee. She was a former model and an actress who changed her name when she moved to Los Angeles and started pursuing roles in films and television. Cher's family situation was complicated and frequently changing. Georgia Holt married multiple times, bringing different father figures into Cher's life. One of her stepfathers, John Southall, was a significant presence. Even though he and Georgia eventually separated, Cher considered him a father figure. Throughout these years, financial stability was a constant struggle. And at one point, Cher was even placed in an orphanage temporarily, an experience both she and her mother found traumatic. Despite these challenges, Cher found outlets for her creativity. Fascinated by Hollywood, she admired actresses like Audrey Hepburn, drawn to the glamorous and unconventional styles they represented. Cher herself started to emulate these influences in her personal style and aspirations. By the time she was in fifth grade, she was already organizing and performing in school productions, showing a knack for leadership and performance. Her academic journey included a significant change when her mother married bank manager Gilbert Lapierre, who adopted Cher and her sister and enrolled them in Montclair College Preparatory School. This school catered to affluent families, which made Cher stand out, not just for her distinct appearance, but also for her personality and creative expressions. Despite not being the top student, Cher excelled in languages and was remembered by her peers as someone destined for stardom. This period was also when she began to manifest her distinctive behavior, performing during lunch breaks and wearing bold outfits like midriff-bearing tops signaling the beginnings of the icon she was to become, her musical acclaim. At 16, Cher took a bold step towards independence by leaving her mother's home and dropping out of school. She relocated to Los Angeles with a friend, determined to carve a path in the entertainment industry. To make ends meet, she took various jobs, including dancing in clubs on Hollywood's Sunset Strip. Cher was proactive in networking, unhesitatingly approaching potential contacts who could advance her career. It was during this time that she met Sonny Bono, an assistant to record producer Phil Spector, in November 1962. Sonny and Cher quickly developed a connection, and soon enough, Cher moved in with Sonny, initially as his housekeeper. Sonny introduced Cher to Phil Spector, who recognized her vocal talent and employed her as a backup singer on several popular tracks. Despite this, her solo singing career started shakily with her first single under the pseudonym Bonnie Jo Mason. The song was a commercial failure, partly because radio stations misunderstood Cher's deep voice as male, causing a misperception about the song's intent. Cher's personal and professional relationship with Sonny deepened, leading them to hold a makeshift wedding ceremony in Tijuana, Mexico in 1964. The duo's fortunes began to change by the end of 1964 when Cher signed with Imperial Records and released Dream Baby under her name, which received some local airplay. Her next single, a cover of Bob Dylan's All I Really Want to Do, became a hit, reaching number 15 on the U.S. charts. 
This success marked the beginning of a more prominent phase in her career. In 1965, the pair reinvented themselves as Sonny and Cher. Their song, I Got You Babe, catapulted them to international fame, topping the U.S. charts and becoming an iconic track of the era. The song's success was so profound that it even displaced the Beatles from the top spot in the U.K. This hit led to a fashion craze among British youth, who emulated Sonny and Cher's distinctive style. The couple's success in the UK was instantaneous, thanks in part to a publicity boost following an incident at the London Hilton, which attracted significant media attention. They were celebrated for their unique fashion sense, blending elements of mod and rocker styles, which included bell-bottoms and fur vests. Upon returning to the US, Sonny and Cher continued to captivate audiences, appearing on popular teen shows and touring major arenas. Their appeal was reflected in the widespread trend among American teens to mimic Cher's fashion style and hairstyle. Their album Look At Us, which included I Got You Babe, was a massive success, spending weeks just behind the Beatles' album Help on the charts. This period was marked by a series of hits that established them as major figures in the music industry, rivaling the popularity of the British Invasion and Motown artists. In parallel to their joint success, Cher's solo career flourished. She released several albums, such as The Sunny Side of Cher, which featured another major hit, Bang Bang, My Baby Shot Me Down. This track, along with others like Alfie from the album Cher, showcased her ability to deliver emotional and powerful solo performances. Cher's journey through the music industry not only reshaped the soundscapes of pop and rock, but also paved her path to a new realm of artistic expression, the silver screen breakthrough. Before we take a look at her prolific dating history, let's take a look at what led up to it. You see, by the late 1960s, the changing musical landscape signaled a shift for Sonny and Cher as their folk rock tunes struggled to resonate amidst the rise of heavier rock bands like Jefferson Airplane and Cream. Cher herself was captivated by the electric guitar-driven sounds of Led Zeppelin and Eric Clapton, yet creative differences with Sonny hindered any musical evolution in that direction. During this period of decline in their musical careers, the duo ventured into film with Good Times, 1967. But the project failed to gain commercial traction. Amidst their waning music success, Cher explored different musical styles in her solo album Backstage, 1968, which also did not achieve commercial success. The couple faced further setbacks as both were dropped from their respective record labels. Cher, however, managed to produce the album 3614 Jackson Highway, 1969, without Sonny's involvement, which was critically acclaimed but commercially unsuccessful due to Sonny's interference with its promotion. In a bold move, Sonny and Cher financed the film Chastity 1969, a project that led to substantial financial loss and increased their debt significantly. Despite the commercial failure, the film hinted at Cher's potential as an actress, a talent that would later be more fully realized. The financial strain from these ventures led them to reevaluate their career path Turning to nightclub performances, the duo adapted their act to a more mature audience, incorporating a mix of banter and music. Unexpectedly, the interactions during these performances, particularly Cher's sharp retorts to hecklers, and even to Sonny himself, became a highlight of their act. This dynamic caught the attention of television executives, leading to guest appearances on primetime shows, where they developed a sophisticated and mature new image. Their revised public persona culminated in the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour, which debuted in 1971 on CBS. The show, blending music, humorous sketches, and an endearing family dynamic, captivated more than 30 million viewers weekly at its peak. It showcased Cher's talents in sketch comedy and her iconic fashion sense, highlighted by Bob Mackey's designs. The program also featured the young Chaz Bono, adding to the family appeal. This television success provided a stable platform for Cher's burgeoning career in entertainment, particularly as an actress. Despite her success on television, 
Cher was not immediately accepted in the film industry as a serious actress. Her early film ventures, including Good Times and Chastity, were both critical and commercial disappointments. Undeterred, Cher relocated to New York in the early 1980s with the intention of studying acting under Lee Strasberg at the Actors Studio, though she never enrolled. Instead, her stage performance in Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean, caught the attention of director Mike Nichols. Nichols cast Cher in the film Silkwood, 1983, alongside Meryl Streep. This role challenged public perceptions of her acting abilities and earned her an Academy Award nomination and a Golden Globe win for Best Supporting Actress. Encouraged by this success, Cher continued to pursue acting with vigor, her role in Mask, 1985, proved to be a significant breakthrough. Despite conflicts with director Peter Bogdanovich and being overlooked by the Oscars, her performance won her the Best Actress Award at the Cannes Film Festival. This role, along with her audacious appearance at the Academy Awards in what became known as the Oscar Revenge Dress, cemented her status as a film star. Cher's appearance on Late Night with David Letterman in 1986, where she famously insulted the host, and her impromptu reunion performance with Sonny in 1987, further fueled her public persona, blending her musical and acting careers seamlessly. During the late 1980s, Cher's film career blossomed with roles in Suspect, The Witches of Eastwick, and particularly Moonstruck, which earned her the Academy Award for Best Actress. These roles showcased her versatility and ability to draw audiences with her compelling performances, affirming her position as a leading actress in Hollywood. Her prolific dating history. Cher has navigated a highly publicized personal life alongside her illustrious career. Her romantic life has been as dynamic and varied as her career. These relationships, often with fellow high-profile artists, have captivated public interest and painted a vivid portrait of her life beyond the stage and screen. In the 1960s and 1970s, Cher's personal life was as eventful as her rising career. Her marriage to Sonny Bono, which spanned from 1964 to 1975, was central to her early celebrity. The pair not only shared a musical partnership, but also a tumultuous marital relationship that culminated in a public and acrimonious divorce. Despite the personal and professional split, Cher spoke of Bono fondly in later years, highlighting a complex relationship that transitioned from romance to a lasting, if nuanced, affection until Bono's death in 1998. Almost immediately following her separation from Bono, Cher entered a brief and intense relationship with Greg Allman of the Allman Brothers Band. Marrying in 1975, their union was rocked by Allman's substance abuse, leading Cher to file for divorce just days after their wedding, although they later reconciled and remained together until 1979. This period was marked not only by personal strife, but also by a creative collaboration that produced the album To The Hard Way. Parallel to her marriages, Cher's dating life included relationships with other notable figures. In her youth, she had a fleeting encounter with Warren Beatty, and later a significant relationship with David Geffen. Geffen played a pivotal role during her split from Bono, both personally and professionally, as he helped her disentangle from the business arrangements tied to her ex-husband. After her marriage to Allman dissolved, Cher found a new romance with Gene Simmons of Kiss. Their relationship, which lasted two years, was open and unconventional by the standards of the time. Cher described it as one of the best relationships she had, highlighting their deep emotional connection despite maintaining other romantic liaisons. Interestingly, it was Cher who inadvertently connected Simmons with his next significant partner, Diana Ross, after suggesting he shop for Christmas gifts with her. In the early 1980s, Cher entered into a relationship with Val Kilmer, the Top Gun star. They met at a birthday party and initially bonded over humor and shared interests, forming a deep friendship that would endure long past their romantic involvement. Despite their strong personalities both striving for dominance, their relationship evolved into a lifelong friendship. 
Kilmer's battle with throat cancer years later saw Cher providing significant support, underlining the depth of their bond. Following her time with Kilmer, Cher found love with film producer Josh Donan. By 1985, the two were living together in Malibu, though they kept the details of their relationship relatively private. Even after their breakup, Cher spoke warmly of Donan, highlighting the serious nature of their relationship and her ongoing affection for him despite the romantic aspect ending. Cher's love life continued to make headlines when she dated Tom Cruise. They first met at the wedding of Madonna and Sean Penn, and later reconnected over their shared experiences with dyslexia during an event at the White House. Their relationship was intense but brief, largely due to conflicting schedules and remains a notable moment in her dating history. Another significant relationship was with Rob Camaletti, whom she met in 1986. Known affectionately as Bagel Boy, due to his job in a bakery, their age difference became fodder for the media. They were together during a pivotal moment in Cher's career when she won the Best Actress Oscar for her role in Moonstruck. Although they eventually parted ways due to intense media scrutiny, Cher later reflected that Camaletti, along with Gregory Allman, was the love of her life, underscoring the depth of their connection. Richie Sambora, the Bon Jovi guitarist, was another of Cher's partners. They worked together on her 1987 album, and their relationship blossomed from this collaboration. Although it ended due to their busy lives, they remained friendly, sharing public exchanges of affection years later. In the more recent past, Cher's romantic life continued to flourish with screenwriter Ron Zimmerman, whom she met via Facebook. Their relationship was marked by Zimmerman's unique personality and humor, which Cher found particularly endearing. While less is known about the reasons for their split, it was another relationship that showcased Cher's tendency to connect deeply with her partners. Currently, Cher is dating music executive Alexander Edwards. Despite a significant age difference, Cher has openly expressed her happiness and the genuine connection they share. They met at Paris Fashion Week in 2022, and their relationship quickly progressed, marked by public appearances and significant gestures, such as the diamond ring Edwards gifted Cher, which she lamented not being able to show her late mother. Cher's romantic history is reflective of her broader life narrative, vibrant, unconventional, and open. She has never shied away from discussing her relationships candidly, describing her lovers as the greatest and noting the high quality rather than the quantity of her romantic experiences. Her Controversies The realm of controversy is not unfamiliar to Cher, who has navigated her fair share of public scrutiny over the years. One such instance that sparked widespread debate involved her comments on social media about a deeply sensitive and high-profile event. Cher faced significant criticism after sharing her thoughts on social media about the tragic death of George Floyd. The backlash stemmed from a tweet in which she expressed a belief that had she been present at the scene, she might have been able to intervene and help Floyd. This comment triggered accusations from some of her followers who felt that her statement reflected a white savior complex. Feeling the weight of the criticism, Cher took to Twitter to address her earlier tweet, which she had already removed. She explained that her intention was to express genuine emotional distress about Floyd's death as she had watched the trial of Derek Chauvin, the officer involved in Floyd's death. Cher's mother had also watched the trial and was moved to tears by the proceedings which had prompted their discussion. Realizing the impact of her words, Cher spoke with a friend named Karen, who helped her see how her tweet might have been inappropriate or hurtful to others, particularly within the black community. This conversation prompted Cher to issue a public apology on Twitter. In her apology, she emphasized that her mistake was not made out of malice, but from a place of not understanding the full implications of her words. She expressed a heartfelt apology to those she had offended, affirming her commitment to being supportive and acknowledging the sensitivity of the topic. Despite the apology, the reaction from the public was mixed. Some accepted her apology, 
understanding that her intentions were good, while others suggested that she needed to reflect more deeply on why her comments were problematic and potentially hurtful. This incident highlighted the complexities of public figures commenting on sensitive social issues and the intense scrutiny that can follow their statements. Cher has recently found herself entangled in another complex and highly publicized legal battle concerning the conservatorship of her son, Elijah Blue Allman, a situation that brings its own set of complex dynamics to the forefront. Family Dynamics and Conservatorship Battle Cher's life as a mother has been filled with both profound joy and complex challenges, particularly in her relationships with her two children, Chaz Bono and Elijah Blue Allman. These relationships have traversed the realms of public adoration, personal trials and legal battles, painting a multifaceted picture of family dynamics under the scrutiny of fame. Chaz Bono, Cher's first child with her former husband Sonny Bono, was introduced to the world on their television show, The Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour. From a young age, Chaz was familiar with the spotlight, but he later sought a quieter life, eventually making significant personal revelations that would once again draw public attention. In 1995, Chaz came out as a member of the LGBTQ community, and in 2009 he publicly shared his decision to transition, a journey documented in the film Becoming Chaz. Cher initially struggled with her son's transition, a reaction that surprised her given her usual open-mindedness. Over time, however, she came to fully support Chaz, who has since found happiness and success in his own right, including making history as the first transgender contestant on Dancing with the Stars. Elijah Blue Allman, Cher's son with Greg Allman, has faced his own set of challenges. Born into a rock and roll lineage, he naturally gravitated towards music, picking up the guitar and performing alongside his mother. However, his childhood was marked by difficulties, including being sent to boarding school at a young age, which he later described as feeling like a form of abandonment. This early isolation contributed to his struggles with drug addiction, beginning with softer drugs and escalating to heroin as a means of coping with his pain. The complexity of Cher's relationship with Elijah came to a head in a recent legal battle over his well-being. In late 2022, Cher filed for temporary legal conservatorship of Elijah, citing his severe mental health and substance abuse problems. According to court documents, Cher argued that without her intervention, Elijah's financial stability and personal safety were at severe risk, particularly as he was due to receive substantial funds from a trust set up by his late father. Cher's petition painted a picture of a devoted mother striving to save her son from his self-destructive behaviors, emphasizing that her actions were driven by love and concern for his survival. The conservatorship request, however, was not without its controversies. A Los Angeles Superior Court judge temporarily denied the immediate conservatorship, pointing out procedural issues and the need for a fair assessment, setting a future date to revisit the matter. This decision underscored the legal complexities and emotional weight of the situation, highlighting the delicate balance between care and control in conservatorship cases. Amidst these legal proceedings, Elijah's personal life also faced upheavals. His marriage to British singer Marie Angela King ended in divorce, with allegations surfacing that Cher had played a role in their separation. This added another layer to the ongoing drama, suggesting the intertwining of professional, personal, and familial interests. Cher's public statements have reflected her deep maternal instincts and the burdens that accompany them. She has spoken about the universal challenges of parenting, especially when dealing with a child's addiction, which millions of other American families also face. Despite the trials, Cher has maintained that being a mother is her most crucial role, filled with joy, even with heartache. Throughout all these difficulties, Cher has shown a relentless commitment to her children's well-being, whether through supporting Chaz's public transition or fighting for Elijah's health and safety. The ongoing conservatorship battle over Elijah is just the latest chapter in this family's public saga, 
reflecting the intricate and often painful interactions between personal intentions and public perceptions. What do you think about SHARE? Make sure to subscribe to the channel and let us know. Thanks for watching.